for unified consoles or unified switches, you have the option to enable SSH support. For example, for this UNVR Pro, if you go to settings, control play, then go to console, see the option for SSH, then you can give it a password. If you use SSH client, you can either authenticate using password or you can use key based authentication. However, just from the graphical user interface for network controller, it doesn't provide a way for you to upload the key. In the lower part of the screen, in the Linux client, if I try to SSH into this UNVR Pro, because it's the first time for me to try to connect to this UNVR Pro, it gave me this warning and asked me whether I want to proceed or not. So if I say yes, then I can input password just to get authenticated, right? Let me cancel this try. Then if I go to the .ssh folder under the user's home folder, you can see there's only one file in this hidden SSH folder under my home folder. It's called known hosts because the unified device was just added to this file. So going forward, if I try to SSH to it again, the system won't ask me this yes no question. As you can see at this moment, the system prompt the password. So at least the system accept the password based authentication, right? In the right side, I will SSH into two different unified devices. The upper one is a UNVR Pro, it's a unified console. The lower one is a regular unified switch. So let's see in these two types of unified devices, how SSH server works differently. Okay, I mean, in UNVR Pro, let me run the netstat command. What I want to do is I want to see the processes which are listening on the 22 part, which is for SSH. Okay, see this one is listening and the process name is called SSHD. I assume it is for open SSH. So this is good because it's a very widely used free SSH service. Then in the lower part switch, let me run the exact same command. Okay, see, it's different. It's drop bear. It's another implementation of SSH service. It's smaller, simpler than open SSH. That makes sense because the upper one is a more powerful unified console. The lower one is just a unified switch. Right then in the UNVR Pro, let me continue digging. So let me go to the SSH configuration folder. It is under etc SSH. So this file sshd config, it is the current active SSH server configuration file. So let me show it for you. Okay, in this file, I am only interested in three parameters for this video. So the first one is password authentication. And the second one is challenge response authentication. These two may confuse you because see, on one hand, the password authentication says no, which means it doesn't support password authentication. But on the other hand, you just saw it, right? From this Linux client, a system did prompt you to input password. So what's going on? In fact, to accept password challenge or not, it's not only controlled by this parameter. This parameter is also effective. So due to this parameter, we also get the password based access. So see here for the second parameter, it says yes, right? If you want to know more about these two parameters, you can go to two different RFC files. So in the left side, I show show you the RFC 4252, I believe in section, section 8, you can see the details about the password authentication. And for the second parameter, the details you can find in the other RFC, 
is 4256. This file explains the challenge response authentication. So in this video, we won't discuss the details, just want to let you know we are able to use password to access the ubiquitous SSH because this parameter is configured as yes. Then the third parameter I wanted to see is called pub key authentication. That parameter determines whether the system allow the key based authentication or not. But in this file, I don't see that parameter. It doesn't matter because the default value for that parameter is yes. Because of this type of SSHD configuration, we have two options to SSH into the system. One, we can use password because we have this particular configured as yes. Second option, we can use key-based authentication. Even though the parameter is not configured here, the default value is yes. So it is still enabled by the system by default. Okay, after checking this parameter, we are confident that from the client side, we should be able to use key-based authentication to log on to the backend. Now let's start configuring the client and the key-based authentication. To configure the key-based authentication, it's very easy. You need to generate a matched pair of keys. One is private, the other one is public. Then you need to somehow copy or share the public key to the SSH server. That's the preparation part. After that, when you try to log in to the server the next time, the server will use the public key to issue a challenge which can only be correctly answered by using the private key. So the SSH client will automatically authenticate you to the server with your copy of the private key. In this way, the system allows you to securely access the server and you don't need to enter the password interactively every time. I'm going to first use a Linux client to achieve the whole process. Before I generate the key pair, let me show the current content within the .ssh folder. So there's only one file. So now we are ready. The command is ssh keygen. You don't need any parameter, simply write. It will prompt you the path and the file name. I simply accept it. You have the option to use passphrase, but I don't want any interaction when I use it, so I choose not to use passphrase. Okay, it's generated. Then if I show the SSH folder content again, see, now there are two files. This one is the private key. This one is the public key. Now we are only ready from the client side. We still need to copy the public key over to the server. There is a dedicated command to do that. Of course, if you want, you can manually do it as well. Let me use the command, which is SSH copy ID. So I need to provide the path to the public key file, then I need to tell the tool where to copy the file to, right? So here, let me specify the UNVR Pro's username and IP address. Okay, then of course, I need to provide the password. Okay, it's copied over, successful. Now, if I go to the UNVR Pro, I'm already in as the root user, right? And then the current folder is my home folder. There is a SSH folder under my home as well. And if I list the content, see, now it has a file. The name is authorized keys. See the timestamp? It was just copied over from the Linux client. So now if I try to SSH to the UNVR Pro from the Linux client. Okay, I simply provide the IP address and the username. See, I don't need to provide password. The process is completely successful. Okay, going forward, as long as I try to SSH to the UNVR Pro, I do not need to use password anymore. As long as my private key still match the public key, which was already copied over to the server. Because for UNVR Pro, it uses OpenSSH. The implementation is the authorized keys appears 
in the home folder of the user under .ssh, right? But we already knew for the Unify switch, it used Dropbear as the SSH server, right? Let's see whether it will behave in any different way. In the Linux client, let me exit this SSH session. Let me do the exact same copy operation. This time, let me use the IP address of the right side Unify switch. By the way, I do not need to run the key generation process again because here we are talking about the same client. So I want to use the same pair of public key and private key to log on to different servers. So here I only copy the public key to the Unify switch. Yeah, because it's the first time I try to SSH to the Unify switch. So I need to first answer this question. Yes. Then, of course, I need to provide password. Oh, I know why. Let me kill it. Instead of using root user, here we are not talking about a Unify console. So I need to use my own user ID instead of root. Okay, see, it's successful. Let's see in the Unify switch, what's the current folder? Okay, so let me first go to my home folder and let's see whether we even have a SSH folder. No, there's no such folder. We need to find out where is the authorized keys, right? Let me search for the file. Okay, we already found it. See, it's under the drop bear folder. If I show the details for this file, you can see the timestamp is current time, which means it tests the result of our public key copy from the Linux client, right? So because of the different SSH servers used in Unify console and the Unify switch, the public keys are copied to different locations. At least now we know we do have the public keys copied over to the switch, right? Then in the left side Linux, let me validate whether the key-based authentication works for this switch. Let me SSH to the switch. Okay, see, I don't need to input password. It's also successful, right? So far, we tried one Linux client accessing two different SSH servers. Both are successful. Now, let me try the other direction. So let me try another client, which is a Mac client. Let me see whether in the same way I can also support Mac OS and whether the same SSH server can support multiple clients which are using key-based authentication. I decided to skip the detailed configuration for the Mac OS because the steps are exactly the same as the Linux. Now, if I go to the UNVR, list the file again under the .ssh folder. See, we still have the same file authorized keys, but see the size is increased and then the timestamp is updated, which means the public key was combined into the existing authorized keys file. Okay, then from the Mac client, let me try to SSH to the UNVR Pro. Okay, successful. If you are worrying about from the Linux client, after the Mac client was authorized, maybe the Linux client will lose its access, right? Let's validate it. Let me exit the current SSH session. So let me connect to the UNVR Pro again. SSH to it. See, it still works, which means now I have two clients, Linux client and the Mac client. They can both connect to the same UNVR Pro. And from the same Linux client, I can connect to two different servers, right? So basically the relationship is multiple to multiple, okay? It seems so far everything goes so smoothly, right? As the last part of the video, let's see whether our changes can survive the unified device reboot. In both unified units, let me reboot them. Then we can see whether we still have the authorized keys, right? So let me reboot them. Give it some time. The reboot for both units are done. I already log on to both units. Then let me see whether the public keys still exist. So first, let me check the UNVR Pro. You know what? For the UNVR Pro, the Unify console authorized keys is still there, which means we should be able to SSH to it by using the key-based authentication. Let me try that from the Linux client. 
yes, it still works. So we are good for the UNVR Pro. But what about the switch? If I try to search the authorized key file again, okay, we still have the file. Let's see whether we are able to connect to it from the Linux client. See, we have a problem. The remote host identification has changed. And then let me see whether it's our updated file or it's just a file which was already reset due to the reboot. Okay, you can see the timestamp doesn't make sense. Apparently, the file was overwritten due to the reboot. If you think about it, it makes sense why Unify Console can keep the uploaded public key file, but the Unify Switch cannot. Because when the Unify Console restarts, it won't be reprovisioned, so nothing will be overwritten. But when the Switch restarts, it will be reprovisioned by the Cloud Key or your Unify Gateway, so everything will be overwritten. So it's a bummer for Switch the public key cannot survive reboot. So you have to upload the public key file again if you still want to use the key-based authentication. But for Unify Console, at least you don't need to do that if the unit just gets restarted. But when it gets firmware upgrade, I believe the file will still be overwritten. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.